Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Online English Teacher. I'm your teacher, Teacher Michael. And today we're going to be talking about descriptive writing. Descriptive writing is a type of writing that lets the author give very detailed descriptions of scenes, events, persons, or things. It is often used to give readers a clearer picture of a subject or to help them better understand that subject. It can help uh, people learn new words and improve their grammar. It's also, it can help improve your communication skills by writing and as well as expanding your vocabulary. It can, it can help you understand the world around you, right? Because if you can describe the world, you can uh, express yourself much more clearly, okay? One of the most important reasons people are learning English should you learn descriptive writing is that it will help them become a better writer, right? As an English learner, you can improve your writing skills by learning to write descriptively. So we're going to start with an exercise, right? A warm up. So uh, please write a captivating, detailed, imagery filled paragraph, right? Usually three to five sentences uh, based on the following pictures above, right? Uh, this is usually for a lesson. So I, I put them, please put your answers in the chat, usually in Zoom or on a Google Docs, right? But for you guys, you can leave your comments down below in the, the YouTube comments and uh, I'll be able to answer you guys back, right? And give you feedback on your writing. But I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. So what I'm gonna do, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to pause the video, all right? And go uh, write each, write one paragraph for each photo, right? So this is a photo of a woman and a child in the field, right? With a cloudy background. So I want you to describe that to me, right? Describe how the photo looks like, right? What colors do you see? How do you feel, right? Um, what type of action is going on? What type of feelings are going on, right? So I want you to do that for every single photo. So one, two, three. So that means you should have three paragraphs, right? For the first photo, the second photo, and then the third photo, right? So we remember we're focusing on imagery, we're focusing on uh, color, we're focusing on feeling, we're focusing on sensation, and we're focusing on you know uh, describing the background, the people, and everything in general. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, when description is used. Right. We use description to uh, introduce paragraphs and scenes and, and as well in narratives for people. We use it to profile people. Right. A character analysis. Right. If you're trying to uh, let's say that you're in college, you're trying to analyze a character from a fictional story or non-fictional story. Right. Uh, you can use description to help describe that character. And for people who are uh, studying big business English. Right. You can use a, a descriptive words or the writing to help with your resumes, right? Uh, reports, uh, research papers, and so on, right? And then if let's say that you're maybe an engineer or a uh, some type of professional that analyzes data, then you'll probably be using it in processes, right? Process analysis, recipes, personal experiences, right? Okay, ineffective description. Ineffective description uses dull, ordinary vocabulary and then in the next slide i think we'll cover what those type of uh dull words are so usually it's very common words right it's usually words that anybody can use even if uh, somebody who's barely learning english will often use these dull words which is fine if you're learning english it's okay to use dull words but if you're much at a much more higher level then it's probably more important to use more uh descriptive words right uh as well as lack of sensory information. Sensory information uh, is smell, touch, taste, feel, and think, as well as what you see, right? And then uh, fail to use follow logical se sequences. What this means is that you fail to understand the whole picture, right? That we have somebody that has a tent here, so they must be camping, right? So that's a logical sequence. They have a tent, they must be camping, right? If you cannot put the tent equals camping, then you fail logically to uh, communicate that idea. Another one is provides unfocused, excessive details. 
right? Sometimes too much details can also be really bad for your descriptive writing. We just want enough details and I'll show you some uh, examples of that. Okay, so we have do words and modifiers. Okay, so I'll read this right now. I went to the beast, past colorful rocks, and then I could see him looking into an old log, right? So this is a beautiful picture of the beach. Okay, but who looked, right? What kind of colors were there, right? They said colorful rocks. What were the colors of those rocks? Uh huh. What was the action being done, right? How does this person do that action, right? So we're going to find a uh, look at a better version in the next two slides. Okay, so now to understand uh, descriptive writing, you have to focus on specific details, right? Uh, this, these are some three tips that you can use to help increase your descriptive writing, right? Use descriptive adjectives, right? Ugly, fat, beautiful, soulful, caring. And remember, adjectives help describe the noun, right? It tells the noun is something, right? If I say fat cat, I'm saying the cat equals fat, right? Use sensory language, sight, smell, feel, think, taste, right? So sensory language is what you think the, the photo might feel, might smell like, might taste like, might what you see with your eyes, right? Those are sensory information. So always use sensory information as well. Say, I see many beautiful colors of green, black, blue, right? Active verbs. So active verbs are different from passive verbs. Passive verbs are verbs that do not, there are verbs, but they're not really action verbs. So for example, an action verb would be like the run, kick, swim, right? Uh, a climb, uh, right, eat, uh, play, right? Those are something that you, the way you can think about it is that uh, with action verbs, it's something that you do with your body, right? It's an action you do with your body. Well, passive verbs are not so much uh, something you do with your body. It's just some type of action that is not really physical, right? Okay, so uh, like I said, here's ineffective vocabulary. These are some stuff that you may want to stay away from when you're communicating uh, uh, in your writing, right? So interacted or vague nouns, right? Things, ways, stuff, types, method, factor, right? Those are inaccurate or vague, right? If I say the thing is good, then uh, you may not know what thing I am talking about. The second one is dull verbs. Dull verbs can be be, do, get, go, have, make, right? These are, like I was saying, these are verbs that have very little action, right? To go, right? I, I may kind of go with my body, but um, the action of go is almost a non-action, right? The action of have is almost non-action. But if I say I, I swiftly moved, to the side of the street then it tells me i moved my body very quickly from one point to the side of the street right so these verbs do not have much action so when you're writing descriptively try to focus on a lot of action and then one is clumsy uh, clumsy modifiers misuse or misplays adjectives or adverbs i probably will cover that a little bit later Okay, so let's look at this. This is the more improved version of the descriptive writing that we read before, but now this is a much more improved version, right? Some vivid verbs and modifiers. I stumbled a little woozily up the beach, clumbering over the boulders of quietly hallucinatory colors, and then from my new vantage point, saw Mark away in the distance on his knees and peering into an old log, right? So we have a lot of great adjectives here, like woozily will be a good uh, adverb. Uh, let's see here, quietly is also a good adverb there. Pollutionary colors would be an adjective right here, just describing the colors, right? 
Uh, let's see. Peering would be is a good verb, right? It's a verb that's a lot of action. Peering means with some, you're looking at something with a lot of concentration, right? So peering. Let's see what we have next. Okay. So lastly, I want to talk about where can you, for example, many students may have trouble learning new words, right? So where can you find new words? You can actually find them everywhere, right? From former sources of books, professional journals, news medias, uh, you know, from even informal sources like uh, from your friends, which are peers, TV, internet blogs, videos, and so on. So what I would highly recommend for you to help expand your vocabulary is that you should learn uh, or you should read, actually read many different types of sources from formal to informal, okay? Uh, understand that you don't have to read informally all the time or, or read formal stuff all the time. You have to uh, uh, write in your reference of where you find your material, okay? It doesn't matter if it's formal or informal. As long as you're learning English and learning new words, uh, you always will be progressing, okay? So that's end of the video so far. Uh, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Remember, I'm waiting for you guys' answers on this warm up right here, right? So I'll be able to give you guys comments on this. And then uh, I hope to hear from you guys soon and have a good day. Okay. Take care.